versus the white grains as far as acid? I actually saw brown rice, which was probably more whole grain, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, um, even that, they said it could be, uh, uh, the, the, the author said it could be more acidic, for, more acidic forming, acid forming. So most grains, I think, whether they're whole grains or not, can be acidic form, acid forming. Now, of course, grains have uh, other things that are uh, beneficial as opposed to the other kinds of foods like, like meats. But there has to be a balance. I'll just encourage you to study that some more, folks. Acid forming, phosphorus. Here yeah, is another table showing which which ones are acid forming and alkaline forming. Now, when these four elements, sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium, are in the proper quantity and balance, the cells absorb the highest amount of nutrients and thus will be in the most healthy condition. So you see the connection, the connection between uh, your pH balance and your ability to absorb and use nutrients. If your cells are more acidic, well, they are not going to be able to use nutrients like they should. Which means, also, if they're not using nutrients like they should, they're going to be producing a lot more, more waste products. They are not going to be able to detoxify themselves. They won't be able to to uh, neutralize those waste products and which in turn will increase the acidity of the blood. Plus, when cells are not working properly, they provide the, breed, the breeding place for harmful bacteria, viruses, and, micro and other microorganisms, which will in turn proliferate. And when microorganisms that are nasty proliferate, they also cause the production of nasty waste products and also in turn bring down the pH level, therefore making it more acidic. It's an interesting thing that the more healthy your cells are, the stronger your cells are, the less opportunistic microorganisms, the less they'll be able to do what they want to do all the time. And there's this interesting quote that I got from Louis, Louis Pasteur, who of course is, he, who developed the germ theory who, who believed that everything was caused by germs. Well, I understand that towards the end of his life, he recanted. He actually took back some of his theories because as a result of what he said, most people were always looking for something they could see, a germ or a virus that caused disease. But later on, towards the end of his life, he said, well, it's not the germ itself that causes the disease. It's the terrain. And here's the way he put it. The, the germ is nothing the terrain or the environment in which that germ operates is everything. Wow. The germ is nothing. The environment is everything. And you think about this. Why does this person have every uh, allergy, every virus that comes around? Why is he always getting the flu as opposed to another person in the same environment uh, not, getting, not getting the flu or catching the cold or an infection? is because something in their bodies. Now, your genes could play a role in it, but even if it's your genes, the way it plays out happens to be through the pH alkaline or the acidic base balance. So it's very important for you to understand that your pH levels should be inclined towards the alkaline as opposed to the acidic. And there are lots of things that we do that ensure, <laughs> guarantee, that it is more acidic mm -hmm. than alkaline. But it certainly seems like one of those topics that affects everything. Absolutely. One of those underlying factors. And that's why I try to uh, bring these, these things to people's attention. Remember, seek medical attention. We're talking about specifics now. The, you've got to work with your doctor. Let your doctor take care of your disease. But he cannot really give you all the answers concerning your health. That is a life long quest, okay, and you have to be the one to embark on it. Right here I show, I'm showing a, a fish tank, a really dirty fish tank. Now you can't see any fish here. Sherry, you probably forgot to put the fish in this thing. <laughs> they all <You> died. <laughs> they all died. Oh, I can, tell, I can see why. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's say you have a fish tank, folks. You have a fish tank that's dirty. You don't take care of it. Well, the fish, fish begin to get sick. 
and you're wondering, what is wrong with my fish? And you're thinking about the fish, you're thinking about the fish. Finally, you call the fish doctor. What do they call fish doctors? I don't uh, know. They call them doctors. <laughs> fish doctors, there you go. You call the fish doctor. The fish doctor comes, he looks at the fish, he examines the fish, he does a blood test. And then he finally prescribes the medication that will help the fish live better. And then you put the fish back right, right back into that environment. Let me ask you this. Will the fish get better? No. Be Absolutely right not. Started. Exactly. It's back in the environment. What do you what should you do if you want to have long lasting relief for your fish? You want those nice fish? Tank. Huh? Put them in a clean tank, a healthy environment. That's right. You want to change the water, provide the right nutrients in that fish tank. Um, to clean it up, make it more conducive, and when that happens, you have a nice, clean fish tank. <laughs> and there you see the fish. They're alive. They're back to health. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, in the same way, folks, in the same way, if you, if all you do when you're sick or you're unhealthy, if all you do is just go to the doctor and get a prescription and take medication that will soothe or, or, or reduce your symptoms, the environment will still most likely be acidic. And if you don't take care of that, if you don't improve the pH levels of your blood, of your extracellular fluid, of your intracellular fluid, if you don't take care of that, uh, there's a good chance your body will continue to break down and break down. And that's why you have things like we mentioned brain fog. That is in that kind of environment that arthritis proliferates because arthritis, because, because uh, acidic environment predisposes to inflammation. Inflammation predisposes to arthritis wherever you find it. And the same thing with damages your heart, damages your blood vessels. It, it just sets you up for disease. You want to have a clean uh, pH, uh, bl um, blood, alkaline, acid, alkaline, clean blood. <laughs> All right. That's a really good analogy. I like that. Oh, thank you. Change thank the water. You. Change the water. Change the environment in which your cells are swimming. So change the environment. Now, obviously, you, everybody can't go and get a, a kidney dialysis. That's an extreme form. But you can gradually change it and clean it up <clears throat> from the inside. And I have this, this in front of you because in our talk on the, like, on the gastrointestinal system, I mean, the GIT is probably one of the most first places you need to start because the liver is part of the gut. And we mentioned that the large intestine is very, very important to, uh, in, in helping to get rid of waste products. So if your gut is clean and healthy, if your gut is empowered, if you're putting the right stuff in your gut, then you will be able to, um, it will eventually translate over into the blood, and your blood will be able to be cleaned up. But that's not the only thing, obviously. So here are a couple of things that you see here. Uh, the liver is the workhorse, the me metabolic factory, and we talked about what it takes to clean up the liver. You see, here's the thing. All the drugs, all the hormones, all the waste products are broken down in the liver before they are shipped over to the kidneys where they are excreted. In fact, the kidneys also do some breaking down themselves, but the liver is the main organ. It's the second largest organ in the body after the skin. The skin also does some, some cleaning up process. But the liver, that, that's the factory. That's where it's at. So if, so if, if you uh, begin to give the liver what it needs, cleansing the liver, cle um, good good uh, nutritional things that help to cleanse the liver, well, the liver will be able to help get your pH levels back to the alkaline levels. And that's, you have a picture of the liver. Now, that's not enough because uh, it, sometimes it takes a really long time to cleanse the liver, especially if you've abused your liver for a very, very, very long time. So it's very important that we also be open to other avenues other technologies out there that will help to cleanse the blood uh, of, of chemicals, heavy metals, biological agents. Remember, we mentioned that microorganisms, when they multiply, they also produce lots of waste products, which in turn raise the acidity levels. Free radical damage can also cause 
your your cells, your body to be more acidic. Radiation can cause, you see, whenever there's damage, here's the bottom line, whenever there's damage to your cells or your tissues, it results in an increase in acidity. So what you want to do is you want to minimize the damage to your cells and to your tissues, and that happens through good nutrition, but it also happens to some, speci some specialized technologies that we're going to talk about in a minute. And here's uh, Rick Deitch, who did who still holds the record for the most number of people on his webinar. And he did a 2x 